this morning as we sing God's praise and if you look in your song and prayer and uh, continue to pray for Brother Joe's message this morning and his word will go forth. God's will be done in our lives. Uh, but I'm not going to read the, the bulletin. You can read it as well as I can. Uh, but remember those people's names that's in the bulletin this morning. Uh, the family of uh, uh, Virgil Long. It's uh, Remember that family this morning. Take time to read the bulletin. There's a lot of good writings in there. Also the uh, the gospel minutes. There's always good writings in there. Uh, take time to read those. And if, uh, continue to pray for our service this morning. Pray for God's will to be done. And uh, for those, most of all, those that's lost and undone and don't know Christ that's in their hearts. That somewhere down the road they'll realize that they need Him. And that this today's message that Brother Joe has will touch their hearts and let them realize that they need to accept him as their Savior before it's too late. So I turn it over to Mr. Jimmy. Uh, we usually try to dock coin the phrase, and it's still pretty good. Good looking crap. Good looking crap. If you will, turn to 396. And uh, the scripture for that is found in Hebrews eleven sixteen. But now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly. Our songs are scriptural. Everything should be scriptural. If you go to the book, you don't have any doubts. Uh, and, and the word of God, that, that's a good thing. So number three, the 96. I will leave this land of bondage with its earthly treasures. I'll journey to a place where there is love on every hand. I'll change a land of heartache for a land of pleasure. I'm camping, I'm camping toward Canaan's happy land. Every day I'm camping, camping toward the land, land of Canaan, Canaan. And with rapture I survey its wondrous beauty spread. Glory, glory, hallelujah, I will find a land of promise. For I'm camping, I'm camping toward Canaan's happy land. Out of Egypt I will travel through the darkness dreary. For over hills and valleys and across the desert sand. But a land of safe and home where I shall not grow weary. I'm camping, I'm camping for Canaan's happy land. Every day I'm camping, camping toward the land of Canaan, Canaan. And rapture I survey its wondrous beauty's grand. Glory, hallelujah, I will find the land of promise, for I'm camping, I'm camping, your pain is happy land. Yes, I reach the land of promise with the scenes of glory, my journey ending in a place so lovely and so grand. I'll be led by Jesus to that blessed land of story. I'm camping, I'm camping toward Canaan's happy land. Every day I'm camping, camping toward the land of Canaan, Canaan. And with rapture I survey its wondrous beauty spread. Glory, glory, hallelujah, I will find the land of 
promise, for I'm camping, I'm camping toward Canaan's happy land. I wondered about that song, done a little uh, self analogy on it. They refer to Egypt, and when you talk about Egypt in the historical part of the Bible, it's always a place of bondage. It's always a place uh, where people were burdened down and stuff. So we got out of there. Number 214. If you don't have a firm foundation in any, any walk of life, nothing else is going to stand that you put on. We need a firm foundation in the Lord. This is a good old song of the church. And the scripture for that is found in Luke 21, 33. The Bible said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. How a firm a foundation, you saints of the Lord, it is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say? To you he has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus has fled. Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will still give thee aid. I will strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand. So near the hand, when through fiery trials I path through shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flames will not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold. To refine, in down to old age, all my people shall prove my sovereign, eternal, unchangeable love. And when hoary hair shall their temples adorn, like lambs they shall still in my bosom be born. Still leaves for repose. I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell, shall endeavor to shake. I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. Sound good. Sound good. You, we're here about an hour. It's not always to free up your mind when you come through the door. If things that are bothering you make a little trouble in you. But when you come <coughs> and sit down in here and you put your mind and your heart into your praise of your God, it should be a different time. It should be something good and blesses us. Do we have any prayer requests this morning? Remember, go ahead. Remember Bill and Wanda. Bill's surgery went well Thursday. Uh, waiting on results to see if he's going to need uh, more chemo. Okay. So keep them in your prayers. Bill Barker had his surgery. Everything went well. And we keep him in our prayers. I talked to Wanda. I said there's been a lot of good prayers. Wanda said for Bill. And we want to see you back in church. If you will, remember Scott Kemplin. He's having some issues and keep him in prayer. Scott Kemplin, keep him in your prayers. Jimmy, I'd like to pray for Glenn Lewis and uh, William Jimmy's mother. She passed away uh, Friday. Who was that, Russell? Uh, Glenn Lewis. His mom passed uh, away? Yeah. Okay, Glenn Lewis, yeah. And, uh, and William Jimmy's mom. 
Okay, yeah. We reject this one. Should I turn in? Say no. She just already does. She's got a table right in there. Frank goes back to the eye doctor Friday and so far he's not improved. The, uh, little Jean's husband Frank in my, he's struggling with his sight and it's, uh, it's not pleasant. You're just a, kind of a blur, but uh, I listen. Things will happen to your life. You do one of two things: you lay down and give up, or you get on your feet and move. Get on your feet, and move. When you lose your legs, you're done for. So we always remember that. Fight back. It's good. See anybody else? Uh, Sister Brenda's asked for prayer for Brad, Brad Lawson, and it could just well be you this morning that uh, we're asking prayer for, and you're not here. I'm assuming you all could hear Paul pretty good. But his co workers, they need your prayers. Uh, I think it was Apostle Paul that looked out on the world and, and he looked at people that weren't Christians. And he still loved them. And he said, But for the grace of God, go I. Don't ever forget that. <clears throat> That's the only thing that separates children from God from people that are not Christians. But for the grace of God, it could be me or go I. Anyone else? Brother Jimmy, we had some things that happened to us this week, and let's just be very much in prayer for people. They seek God's truth, not what the world has to offer. Amen. Amen. Seek God. Everything else will work out. Might not hear. There's something just that you can't see, and it's that close. If you lifted the veil, we'd all want to leave here. None of us would be content here. But it's down now, but it'll be open. Anybody else? Listen, this is a good song. And when you sing this song, this one, you're talking to God. This is a prayer that everybody in this house and I'll flip to him. Uh, number 52. And the scripture for that is from the book of Psalms, chapter 86, verse 1. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. My goodness, what a confession. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no care comes like thine, and be support. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh
Romans 12, 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, and continuing instant in prayer. That's what we need to continue to do. We need to rejoice in hope. The hope of a better day, the hope of a, a better life. And be patient through the tribulations as we go through them. And remember to always be instant in prayer. This time I ask Brother Tom Steele if he wouldn't care to come forward and lead us in prayer. Let's bow our heads. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for another Lord's Day. Thankful for the blessings that have been uh, down through this week, dear Heavenly Father, with so many seeds that were sown at our DBS. And thankful for those that worked in it, those that attended, dear Lord. And we pray that that spirit continues on, dear Lord, in our lives. We have so much to be thankful for, dear Lord. And we're thankful for your grace and your mercy that you have bestowed upon us. We're thankful for Jesus Christ, dear Heavenly Father, our Savior and your Son that was given. Let us humble ourselves at this time, dear Lord, and, and let us praise and worship you for the next hour. Let us listen to the word, dear Heavenly Father, and take it into our heart. Sing these songs with praise, dear Heavenly Father, and, and lift them up as though we're singing them directly to you as we are. Be with the many requests that are made, dear Heavenly Father. We are mortals here and we need your help. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, for those that are sick. We'd ask that if it be thy will, that you would heal them back, mend their wounds, dear Heavenly Father. We pray most of all, dear Lord, for their salvation, that they may be well again and that they may see the need for you in their lives. We pray that you be with those that are caregivers in so many different facets, dear Heavenly Father. Father down here. Be with our leaders, dear Heavenly Father. Be with all those that are over us. Be with the first responders, those people that provide services for us. We're so thankful for them and their expertise. Again, we ask that you be today here with Alex and Joe, dear Lord, as they uh, come to us with the word that it would be fruit for us, dear Heavenly Father, that we may thrive on down through the next coming days. We praise you for each and every soul, dear Lord, that has a mind to come out and understand the need to be here today asking that you your spirit would be here upon us as we know the word says it is let it speak to each of us as we have need we ask all these things dear heavenly father subject to your will through jesus christ our savior amen Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till ye come. At this time, we're going to have a song number 286. And on the last verse, we have a group of gentlemen that are going to surround the table. And we will pass out to you. Bible said that Jesus went out into the Mount of Olives. And here's what he said. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. There's no medicine that can cure that. The only thing that can cure that is the love of God. Please thank you. Tis midnight and on
I'd like to read from the book of Second Corinthians, now, chapter nine. And I want to begin with verse five. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as covetousness. But this I say: He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his own heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. <coughs> At this time, we're going to sing a song, 81, and uh, we'll have some uh, deacons, elders, or not elders, but elders, that will quiet, pass a collection plate. Uh, give as you feel in your heart. Uh, and on the last verse, I think. Uh, there are children, you got little children here that would like to go downstairs, there's going to be a teacher down after that. God had asked the question, whom shall I send? And in Isaiah, the 6th chapter and the 8th verse, Isaiah said, here am I, send me. There is much to do, there's work on every hand. Hark the cry for help comes ringing through the land. Jesus calls for reapers, I must not to be. What will thou, O Master, hear of my sin be? service again. Thank the Lord for that. This is absolutely wonderful. To look back on this crowd and see the house. To see people. 
praise the Lord. Happy Father's Day. The Lord's been working with me this last couple of weeks to get a message out. Didn't know where he was going to. Didn't know what was done. Still don't know. Leave it up to him. He's got it all in his power. Every little bit of it. Read some material. Do that occasionally. A lady gave me a gave me a uh, magazine. Four or five of them. Don't really agree with 100% of it, but there's things I do like and things I don't like, but it has information in it. First and foremost, this morning, I want to thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity again to come back out here and speak His Word. The people that want to hear His Word, want to know what they need to do in their lives and where they're at now at the time. This magazine I got is from the Billy Graham of Atlantic Association called Decision. I don't know how many aliens ever seen it, know anything about it. It's a script that you can get. And I was reading it the other day. Now, I did not fact check, fact check this thing or anything like that. I don't know whether I know how to do stuff like that or not. I know there's all kinds of stuff out on the internet. Only thing, I only thing I know 100% sure, and that's this right here. God's holy word. Word. That is 100% for sure. Prophesies, tells what's going to happen, what will happen, or what will happen to you if you don't do what it says to do. Simple as that. I believe it. Every word of it, from front to back. But this magazine says approximately. That's approximately. 80% of the world's population live in countries where religious liberty is threatened, restricted, or banned. Let this sink in a minute. 80 percent of religious liberty. There's some religious liberties out there I don't agree with. No matter what it is. There's liberty. Today I see liberty again here. We were banned for over a year in this United States. I'm telling you people, we've got to wake up. We as Christians have better wake up and see where we're at. This is a common thing for the world. We have still got that freedom here in the United States. And we better hold on to it and we better fight for it. <clears throat> this ain't a message I wanted to give today. But the Lord's put it on my heart just within the last hour or two. That we as Christians had better get our act together. Me included. I'm pointing my fingers at me this morning. My fingers is at me. When I read that article in that magazine, I said, that can't be. 80%. And then I went on over in the magazine a little bit. And here kneels down two African people with militants behind them. And in that article, their life was taken that day. Because they stood up for liberty of religion. For God. A few months ago, I done a sermon up here on the apostles. All of the apostles had a violent death. Some were skinned alive. Hey, 
run through with swords. Only one died of old age, but he had a rough life to live. We was talking in Sunday school about love. Love is very important for Christians. That's what gets you through. <coughs> love casteth out fear. I'm not going to say I've not been afraid. I'm not going to say I don't fear. But I do know right now that if I died right now, the Lord, God above, has got my soul. Amen. I live with that hope. Well, no, Joe, you not no, I live with that hope. That's what my Bible tells me. I live with a hope. That if I do things right in this life and do it the way he says for me to do it, that I will make it one of these days to a better place and I have nothing to fear. I'll have the most wonderful place ever was. It is there for each and every one of us. But think about that. 80% of the world say, I don't want you to have that freedom. And they'll do everything they can to keep you from having it. Christians, you better wake up. I had better wake up. These songs that we just sung fitted it just exactly. Jimmy mentioned a little bit ago about camping in Canaan land and coming out of bondage. We was let out of bondage this week here at this congregation. Let me tell you. I don't know where this sermon is going to. I still don't. But he's told me to read some things here, and I'm going to read it. It's changed a little bit. I was going to go to Ephesians, I'm still going to go to Ephesians. May not get all of it in because of the time frame. I'm going to tell you, when I read out of the God's Word, go back, write it down, what are you going to do? Go back and look before I start reading and go after I start I stop reading it. Because it gets you the full context of the Scriptures. I don't want to tell you what I think up here. I want to tell you what God knows. And I know God knows. God understands what I'm going through. He understands what you're going through. And we're not going through the same things. But he knows. That's why he gives us his word. In Ephesians chapter 6, starting with um, the 10th verse. Like I said, go back up through there and read more of this. Even got Father up there in the second verse. This is Happy Father's Day, by the way. We celebrate as a Father's Day. But I want to go to verse 10. Let's stay on the let's stay on what the Lord wants me to do here. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Think about that again. Let me read that verse one more time. Verse 12. <laughs> For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I've wrestled a lot with that this year, this past year. I've wrestled a lot with it. I read this. 80% of the world's population live in countries where religious liberties is threatened, restricted, or even banned. This is people that is writing laws and regulations what we must live by. The Constitution of the United States and the First Amendment said we have freedom of religion. No, I do not agree with all religions. I believe in this right here, God's Word. I can have all kinds of religions. I believe in the true God of heaven, Jesus Christ, 
who I confess as being the Son of God who died on a rugged cross, not for the sins that he committed, but for the sins that I committed. I committed those sins. He did not. He made it way possible for me to be able to live this life, fight this war that I'm up against right now, and go and live with him in heaven one of these days. That's the hope I live with. That's who I am. I am a child of God, a sinner, saved by the grace of God. Nothing I can buy, earn, or do anything for. He has freely given it to me. Now, I'm just going to let everybody walk over me and have it. No, I'm going to fight for that freedom. I'm going to fight for that. I'm going to put the armor of God on. Now, if you'll read on down through that, which I'm not going to do right now because I need to read a bunch of other stuff real quick. That's what the Lord told me this morning. But if you go on down through there, verse 13 to 18, you'll find out what the armor of God is. Everything is frontal. He didn't tell me to run and turn around and run and take off. He did not tell me to turn my back. He said, you face it head on and I'll give you the strength. That's exactly what my Lord told me to do. Now, let's go over to John chapter 12. You would turn with me. I don't want you just to take my word for the things I'm saying. I want you to go and read it for yourself. Now, if you disagree with my comments, that's fine and dandy. I have no problem with that. Come with me. We'll talk about it. Come to me later. We'll talk about it. I want to give you what God's word says. Then you make your own decision on it. That's the freedom I have, and that's the freedom I want you to have. John chapter 12, starting with verse 23. Like I said, to get the full grip, uh, get the full grip on this, go back and look through the first part of that chapter too. But I want to start with 23. It said, and I'm going to do a little bit of reading here. <clears throat> and Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto, eternal, unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. And if any man, ser if any man serve me, him will my father honor now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? The question. Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I. But for this cause came I into this hour. This is Jesus Christ speaking here. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it is thunder. Others said, an angel spake to him. This is Jesus Christ knowing that the hour was come, that he was going to give his life. I read that this morning. I thought about it. The Lord put it up on my heart. Joe, you've got to read that today. Okay. Sit there and I get through something. Like I said, I'm still not sure where he's going through all this stuff. But I need to read on down through here some more. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sake. This is the people he's talking to, these people here. He did, this voice didn't come because of me. This is Jesus Christ said, It didn't come because of me. This becomes because you need to hear this. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Jesus Christ, through that first little bit that I was talking about a minute ago, that farmer that talked about the corn, if it, doesn't die, if it doesn't die in the ground, it cannot produce any corns later on. You know how a corn, a year of corn, will get a whole bunch of corn, one little grain in the ground sprout up once it dies. It'll sprout up. 
being a grower to a great big year of corn where there's many <coughs> kernels of corn on that corn. That's what the reference was. Jesus Christ had to come to this earth and die on this earth so that he could make many later to be able to live with him in heaven. Verse 33, this he said, signifying what death he should die. What I just said, what I just explained. The people answered him, we have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever, and how saith thou the Son of Man must be lifted up? They didn't understand it. Who is this Son of Man? They were talking to the Son of Man and didn't even know it. We'll find that a little bit later on. God's got a plan for everything. But he has given us freedom now. Verse 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet, yet a little while is the light with you. Who was the light that was with him? It was Jesus Christ himself. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. While ye have light, believe in that, <coughs> believe in the light that ye may be able. <laughs> Excuse me. While ye have light, believe in the light that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. I, I don't understand exactly what was going on there in this, in this and somebody <coughs> maybe can explain it to me later. But he hid himself from them for a little bit there. Let's go on down through there in verse 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Jesus Christ had already done a bunch of stuff. A lot of stuff. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which spake, Lord, who hath believed our report. Do you remember back in the book of Isaiah? <coughs> he says, Lord, who hath believed our report? That's a question. And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Well, who, who's he revealed it to? Therefore, they would not, there, in verse 39, therefore they could not believe because that Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted, and I should not heal them. And I should heal them. Excuse me. Let me read that again. <clears throat> Verse 40. He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Verse 41. These things said Isaiah when he saw <laughs> his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Let that sink in a minute. Because, and if you go back up there and read back in the earlier part of that chapter, about the scribes and the Pharisees sought how they could actually kill Jesus and also put Lazarus back to death that Jesus had raised. People, darkness in high places. <coughs> Think about it a minute. We're looking at people in high places. The scribes and the Pharisees was the leaders. Go right back up there before you get to verse 23, you'll find where they even wanted to put Lazarus back to death because Jesus had raised him. And a lot of people believed on Jesus because Jesus done the miracle of the raising of Lazarus. <coughs> Salvation is very simple to get to it. You need to first hear the word of God. Once you've heard the word, you need to believe that word. Not just, oh, I believe what that, well, I know there's God in heaven. No. You need to believe. You need to believe to the conviction of your soul that you're a sinner. 
I want to <coughs> repent. In other words, I don't want to live in sin no more. We all have done things we shouldn't do. Some we might think is worse than others. But we've all done it. Just knowing, coming to the age of accountability, we know that we're sinful. And once we do that, we need to repent. Then we have the opportunity that what we can give you here today, or anywhere, as a matter of fact, you don't have to be right here, but anytime, you need to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. I don't need to confess your sins. You need to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. You believe, or you hear, you believe enough that you want to repent of your life and you want to confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And then you have your baptism. It's another must. It's all simple, and it's a must. Now, when you want to start the battle is once you come up out of that water. Once you come up out of that watery grave, and if you don't understand what the, why you have to be baptized, go to the book of uh, Romans chapter 6 and read that. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as that grain of corn went and died on the cross, was put in the ground, and then God the Father raised him back from that. My Jesus Christ is alive today. Amen. He is not dead. Amen. Nowhere near it. Yes, he gave his life for me. Yes, he had to give up his life on this earth. No, he did not want to. Go and read about in the Garden of Gethsemane where he asked three times for the, this cup to be passed from that the God said, no, this must be done. This is a plan of God. Well, the plan he got was that he blinded the people's eyes here too. That was God's plan. Now we don't live under that dispensation of time. We live under the grace covenant. Jesus Christ is my chief priest. I go to him. Personally, I don't have to take Brother Jim, Brother Tom, Brother Dan, Brother Paul. I don't. I take me to Jesus Christ, and He takes me to God. Me. He don't even take Terry with me. I go to Jesus Christ. Terry has to go to Jesus Christ. My wife goes. To, my kids goes to Jesus Christ. I don't take them. I can't. I don't have it. Jesus Christ does. He was given all power in heaven and earth. Whatever I need, he'll give to me. <clears throat> now, Johnny might give you something bad. Yeah. If I ask for it, he might give me something bad, and I might be condemned to hell, too. Simple as that. I have freedom. I can choose what I want. 80% of the world's population today is either threatened, restricted, or banned. From religion. You tell me we ain't getting in bad shape. I'm telling you. You better put the armor of God on. And start standing up for what's right. And what's right for the soul is to follow Jesus Christ. Not man. Not me. Do not. Absolutely. Do not follow me. Follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The people in power, if you would take go along with Jesus, because they were afraid there in verse 42, they were put out of the synagogue, which would be what we call it today, the church. Verse 43, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Does this not sound familiar today? Does this not sound familiar of what we just went through? Jesus cried and said, now this is Jesus talking again in verse 44. He that believeth on me, listen to this, he that believeth on me believeth on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, and he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. I, Jesus Christ talking, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge not. Huh. Somebody said, Jesus Christ, but, well, he says, Jesus says, I judge not. Jesus Christ doesn't judge. Look at what he's done. 
This is what he says. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. The things that Jesus came to say was what God sent him to say, come and say. He did not send Jesus Christ into the world to condemn the world. In here is a baby in a manger. He sent Jesus Christ in to come to seek and to save those that are lost. Not to judge them. That will happen in the last day through the words that he gave Jesus Christ to give to us. That's what you're going to be judged by is the word of God and God's going to do the judging on it in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment. Listen, he gave Jesus Christ a commandment that I should say and what I should speak. Exactly what I just told you. Jesus Christ came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him would be saved. But it's a freedom we have. That's the freedom that is given from God, not from man. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, come to this ground as a baby, as an infant that had to be cared for by his mother, just like any other child, except he was divine. God sent. So that we, mortal people, could have everlasting life. It's a freedom that we have. If you read back into the annals of time in the Bible, there was prophets that God spoke to to give his message out. Then, God's people, the Israelites, had a Mosequia law. They had to contend with. Very strangest could not be accomplished even by the best. God knew that he had to do something. God knew he was doing something. He was going to do something. He sent his only begotten son into this world. And what we just read about is Jesus Christ said, my time has come. I've got to lay down my life. You go back and read in the Gospels, you'll find out that he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed three times. Three times. My Savior Jesus Christ prayed to God his Father, let this cup pass from me. But at the end of the prayer he said, not my will, but thine be done. So that we can have the freedom that we have now. that 80% of this world's population don't get. Or if they do, they do like these people did here in John. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed of him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Are you ashamed of Jesus Christ today? Are you ashamed of what somebody up in a higher place may say about, well, you're just going to be a Christian. You're going to like, I don't know, I'm going to say nothing. You know what? I was in that place at one time. I was ashamed to say anything about Jesus Christ. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, today, I stand before you and proclaim that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he can and will save your soul. That you have to accept it. Freedom. Freedom. You have to accept it. Guess what? You can reject it too. It's not going to change Jesus Christ one bit. 
He came, as we said that a few minutes ago, the heat, and this is in Jesus' word. I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He's the savior of this world, the savior of the people of this world. I'm not going to force nobody. Go back and read in uh, Ephesians, if you would, on down to, because uh, I'm not going to take time to do it, it's already 12 o'clock. Uh, go on and read, read, read the armor of God. If you look at the armor of God, it's all frontal. Everything's frontal. God wants us to fight for Him. And that's what I plan to do. I plan to fight, fight and stand up for Jesus Christ who has my back. I don't have to worry about my back. Jesus Christ is God. Whether I live, whether I die, I live for the Lord. If I die, I go to be with Him. There's no fear. You can have that today. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray that you do that. Right now is a really good time to do it. We stand in sing number 606. The scripture for the song today is Purge me and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Psalms 51 percent. I hear the Savior say my strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray things this week, some things that 
I never really expected, I knew it was real, but I never expected to meet up with it face to face, but I just want to re-emphasize how important it is that you get into your Bible and you read it for yourself because there are Amen. false prophets out there in the world. Amen. There Absolutely. are people that are going to try to lead you astray, and I just pray that, especially for these small kids growing up in the church, don't even just listen to your mom and dad. Get in that word for yourself exactly. and see what the Lord says because it's important to you. Don't leave your fate in somebody else's hands. Find that peace for yourself. You've got the mediator, Jesus Christ himself, who is the Savior of the world, as we just read about. Absolutely. Anybody else? Joe, we will be here in-house Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We will also be conducting that virtually. We will not have a service tonight due to Father's Day to spend time with the family. Next Sunday night, we will be in the house uh, having services here, and we'll also conduct those virtually, virtually simultaneously. We're staying on virtual, even though we're still having in-house yes. service. Yes. That's what I thought. I understood that, yeah. Yeah, we'll ha we're not having services tonight at 7 o'clock because of Father's Day. You get a chance to be the family and stuff. Wednesday night at 7, it is, isn't it? Yes. We'll be having Bible study. And then uh, next Sunday, be the same Sunday school, church, just like we are today. We're open back up for business. Uh, and then Sunday night, next Sunday at 7 o'clock, we'll have our uh, family get the other night. So. Yeah, and I would like to say that for the family group, you know, it's been a while since we've all been here. And I encourage, if you have these small kids, we're going to try our hardest. We're going to give it our all and, and start that back up and actually have these programs for the kids. So Amen. that hopefully we keep them here and not out in the world. Okay. If you, if you couldn't hear Amber, that uh, try to get, if you've got special, if you've got young kids, we've got all kinds of grounds out here to, to do all kinds of activities. We've got some people who wanting and willing to do that. Uh, and we're going to do our best to get that, the program back, back up and going again. So uh, try to get together on family nights and, uh, and the Bible study too. All the programs we have here, like I said, it's freedom. We have that opportunity and we're doing it again. So. Y'all were also doing children's church to rotate that so everyone will have a chance to be up here to hear a message so if you're interested just let us know we've got next sunday covered okay next sunday's covered i think sister linda took them down today, today. Yes. yeah okay so we're we're getting we're getting back to the norm we're trying to anyways so we put it in god's hand and he'll take care of all of it anyways anybody else got a word for this message? It's a little ways off that on the first Saturday we will be having a men's breakfast right. in July here right. in the fellowship hall. July third. Uh, July third. Men's breakfast in the fellowship hall. Do you have something? I've been here a long time. We always uh, like to run races at Lake Street. Some of you boys remember that? Some of you yeah. girls? This week, I think the baton with the torch passed to another team. I have been privileged to be a part of several teams. I've been privileged to be part of a lot of teams at Lacey Creek. Many of them gone, but we never did start a race that we didn't finish. You do not quit. There's no place. And our theme was about champions. Sometime, take a walk down the stairs and look at the trophies on the wall. That's a sign that somebody put forth effort. Somebody tried. But now it's time. Sue and I and many of them that's been in the church a lot of years, we still try and, and we'll give you information or or help you in any way that we physically can. But DBS was about passing the baton to the man in front of you. And you step aside, you finish your course. That's what Paul said about life. He said it's a race. He said it's a race. He finished his course. I have about finished mine. But I wouldn't take anything for the competition that we've had here at Lacey Creek over the years. So I commend, I commend you younger ones. You gotta have you, you gotta have you. I couldn't run to the back door. 
there's something bad that I can do. <laughs> but thank you for being here. Listen, you're going to need your church family more in the next few years than you ever needed them in your life. Satan has sprayed us with some bad stuff. He sprayed the whole world. Did you ever see such a change in a matter of a few months? People at each other for no good reason or cause. Don't let him do that job to you. You love him. You love each other. You try to take care of people. You try to do the right thing. Do something good today for someone. That's what he did. He went about doing good. Thank you, Joseph, for allowing me this few Steve, minutes. While you're still up there, I just want to say that, you know, you were commending things that have been done here, and I want to give my roses while people are living, and I want to commend you for letting the Lord use you all these years. You touched a lot of hearts here in this church, and I want to thank you for that. Thank you, Tina. Amen. I say that with respect. Peanut was our little alto, or uh, friend, and the tapes that we cut. A lot of good memories, right? We absolutely have. Anybody else? All mine to clear. Brother Dan, will you come up and dismiss us? I'm going back up. Lord, we thank you so much for the lesson we had today, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to be able to be out here again, Lord, to be able to conduct services like we uh, used to. We're so thankful, Lord, that, that uh, you're, you continue to be with us and we can continue to worship you. Lord, we're not only thankful to be back here, we're thankful for the many blessings that we were, we've received. We thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for this congregation. We continue to pray for those less fortunate than us, Lord. We will continue to pray for them and and throughout the week, Lord. And we pray that we'll be able to take the message that we got here today, Lord, to other people that we meet throughout the week. We pray that you'll be with us as we go our separate ways here today. But, but you will continue to be with us, Lord. And, and we thank you so much for that. We pray that we'll all be able to meet out here again. All these things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.